In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I used to have to work hard to get into the spirit of Holy Week. I'd focus as hard as I could on what Jesus had gone through and try to connect to it emotionally and extract some spiritual lesson for myself out of it. But that all changed when I got close to someone on death row. And knowing her changed the events of this week for me, this week which is Jesus' death watch, so that these events became less abstract and distant, and I less eager to find redemptive value or spiritual insight in them. So that on the contrary, what I really want to do when I hear the passion story, or even at this moment, is be quiet and cry. And fair warning, I just might cry at some point during this sermon. But you're expecting a sermon, so don't worry, I will give you one. (laughs) But I can't approach this moment without seeing it through the lens of that experience, so what I'm going to do now is share with you some of that experience. Three years ago, after 16 years in prison, Kelly Gissendanner, a woman I had grown very close to, received her first death warrant, which gave her a time and date for her execution and put her on formal death watch. And during this eight-day period, prison officers had to monitor her every single move and document it 24-7. And medical staff also had to closely monitor her and her health and her vitals and every single thing she ate and drank. Other inmates, other prisoners were watching too because they saw their fate tied up with hers. And her family and friends were watching as well. And so were the family of her victim, of course. It was a hard place to be for her and for all of those watching and for those forced to participate. It was hard to stay in this morally confusing place and to remember all at the same time God's love for her and for those she had hurt and for those who were hurting her now and me through her. I wanted to protect myself and I wanted to reassert control by coming up with the perfect thing to say or doing something that would make all of this better or making theological sense of it, making it fit into my understanding of God and the world. But nothing about this made sense. And the truth was I felt so helpless and so scared, not just for her but also for me and for my faith. But at times like this, you just do what you have to do. You all know that. And I felt like I had no choice, so I showed up. And we passed time together. We passed time playing I Spy and talking about Survivor, which I was very into and so was she, and reading Psalms and talking about dying. We passed the time together dreaming about future grandchildren and bike rides all while planning her funeral. And then we all had to leave and she was taken away to Jackson where the state's death chamber is and she was executed. But even then she was saying how sorry she was and singing Amazing Grace. Through all of that, through all of that, her hope survived even though the contours of that hope kept changing. And I will never be able to go through Holy Week in the same way again. For one, I'm much more sympathetic with Jesus' disciples who turned away during this week, during his death watch, who fell asleep when he needed them to keep vigil with him in Gethsemane, who betrayed him for money or for a good cause, who denied him, who just 
ran away. I get it. I get it. They didn't know what to say either. They didn't think they could handle this. They weren't sure what to believe or hope for anymore. They wanted to be on the right side of things. And they were afraid. They were afraid for their lives and their goodness and their reputation. But I also stand in newfound awe of those who stayed with Jesus during his passion and before. The woman who anointed him on his way into Jerusalem. She anointed him with a jar full of expensive ointment. The kind of ointment you would use to anoint a king or a prophet or a dead man. She saw what was coming and she did not turn away. And then our gospel makes mention of the women who stayed with Jesus, who followed him from Jerusalem all the way to the cross or as close as they were allowed to get, who stayed with him and bore witness to this painful, shameful death. This is not just their story and it's not just my story, it's our story because there are all kinds of death watches. Even if you've never gone through an official one, you know what it is to watch and wait and hope with a loved one who is facing something extremely difficult, maybe even death. You know what it is to watch and wait and hope with someone who seems to be stuck in a prison of addiction or depression or grief or any kind of dark night of the soul that tries their faith and yours. You know that feeling of inadequacy. You know the temptation of wanting to say the right thing, to fix this situation, to explain it away, to reestablish control, to do anything you can to be not fully present to the pain that's in front of you. And I imagine you know what it is to be suffering yourself, too. And you know how hollow some of those common consolations can sound. And yet, and yet, how much the presence and the love behind them means. How much it means to have someone stay with you, even if they're inadequate, even if they don't know what to say. How much it means to have someone stay with you and bear witness with you or for you. To witness, to witness, theologian Shelley Rambo concludes from her work with trauma survivors, to witness involves trying to grasp a sense of things in the darkness and attempting to move toward life without knowing its shape. To witness, is the persistence of love in the midst of suffering. It is the persistence of love in the midst of suffering. This is what the women in our gospel show us and remind us today to bear witness, to watch and wait with Jesus during this week as he walks toward the cross and to allow the darkness and confusion of this week to disorient us and to complicate our narratives and to jostle our faith even in faith that it will be made new. And as we bear witness with these women and with Jesus, may we bear witness with one another too. May we have the courage to not turn away from those who are suffering or dying or from those who have been condemned. May we, may we persist in love in the midst of suffering and in the midst of sin. May we persist in love in this confusing space of Holy Week and even this day between the triumph of Palm Sunday and the passion of Holy Week and the resurrection the resurrection that we hope for but haven't yet seen. May we persist in love in the midst of suffering. May we bear witness too.
Amen.